Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today's battle is the first battle of Fort Wagner between Union General Quincy A. Gilmore, George C. Strong, and Admiral John A. Dahlgren overseeing a brigade from the 2nd Division of the 10th Corps, the Department of the South, against Confederate Generals P.G.T. Beauregard, yes, one of the channel's OG generals, along with Colonel Robert F. Graham and their more than 2,000 defending Confederate troops. The battle occurred between the 10th and 11th of July, 1863. Enjoying a string of victories at Gettysburg and Vicksburg, Union General Gilmore's next target was Morris Island, the southern facing and one of the most important defensive strong points overseeing Charleston Harbor itself. The Union knew Gilmore was the choice because of his engineering experience and his success in the April 1862 assault at Fort Pulaski. They believed if anyone could break the defenses, it would be General Gilmore. Gilmore led four regiments consisting of 21,000 newly trained black men who had already proven their worth. Using his experience on July 10th, Gilmore's artillery on Folly Island, along with Union Admiral John Dahlgren, also a returning character with his four ironclad ships, began a massive artillery bombardment, starting to south end of Morris Island. One of the main purposes of the artillery was to give Union Brigadier General George C. Strong time to cross with 2,500-man brigade at the Lighthouse Inlet and on the Morris Island itself. Due to the resilience of the Confederates and some miscommunication, the Union troops were scattered in their landing. Some of the Union troops ended up landing on the Confederate heavy artillery in their trench or in the ocean itself. There was a bit of serendipity involved in this as the Union captured more than 12 artillery pieces and 300 Confederate prisoners here. The position was perfect to launch from as they progressed up the island itself. Confederate command staff panicked at the sight of this and ordered multiple Confederate units, mostly comprising of Confederate Colonel Robert F. Graham and his 1,800 men to go to Fort Wagner to reinforce the position. Meanwhile, the Union success continued at least three more miles up the island until they reached Fort Wagner where they found that the fort blocked off the northern half of the island. By now, afternoon was ending and Union forces hunkered down for the night. Early in the morning, July 11th, George Strong ordered his men to attack, led by the 7th Connecticut Infantry. The fog of the night before had cloaked Graham's reinforcing of the Confederate positions, leaving the Union troops believing the fort shouldn't be too hard to take. And as they pushed into the morning fog, they continued to believe it as they easily took some of the trenches and rifle pits, at least until they reached the moat. The moat was a bloodbath, however. As soon as they reached the moat, the Confederate artillery started raining fire down on the exposed Union infantry, crushing the advance under a wave of explosions as Confederate troops charged out to retake the rifle pits, pushing the Union troops back down the island some distance to already established trenches. The fighting continued for most of the day and then the troops seemed to just be reinforcing their respective trenches. The Union and Confederates both ended up in similar positions with the Union troops suffering approximately 340 casualties, consisting of 50 killed, 123 wounded, and 167 captured or missing. The Confederates themselves lost about 314 men, 14 were killed or wounded, while another 300 or more troops were captured, along with 12 artillery pieces. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.